Yay. Hi everyone, I'm gonna wait until Shari joins and she's gonna talk about we're gonna we're gonna wait for her. Uh what can I do? Yay! So we're gonna wait for her to join in and then we're gonna start. Let's accept. Oh, <laughs> it's just just my neck. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much, Shari, for joining. I waited till you joined on to um, give this a little intro. So welcome, everyone, thank you for joining today. So we are so blessed to have Shari here with us, who is a holistic health coach, a family nutrition coach, and uh, she has helped improve her son's type one type 1 diabetes, which is something that is like pretty much, it's like almost like unheard of or not even spoken of. And we, we need to hear more about this. So I asked Sherry to join us. So Sherry, thank you so much for joining today and for sharing all the amazing, loving hard work you poured into like the research to be able to help your son. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, Becky. Thank you for having me on. And I always love opportunities to talk about this because you're right. It's not nearly spoken about enough. Um, you know, even when I was training to be a holistic nutrition and health coach, and I was going through schooling. I felt like we didn't really spend much time on the topic. You know, we definitely never spoke of, you know, preventative measures. Um, we never spoke of gut health having anything to do with, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, type one diabetes. That's for sure. Like never learned anything, uh, I'm like shocked that they don't talk about that at all. So like, what would they, what would they talk about? Like what was, yeah, what, how, yeah, what did they talk about? Yeah, so mostly it was talked about the fact that it's believed to be genetic, right? And so that's pretty much the biggest link that they had to type 1 diabetes. Because I mean, type 2 diabetes, obviously, we know that, you know, it has a lot to do with your lifestyle, your nutrition, but actually in type 1, they teach you that nutrition doesn't really have anything to do with it. Of course, in the schooling that I did, because it's holistic nutrition, they did touch on nutrition as being an important part in how to manage it. But um, yeah, it was really genetics. They really spoke of genetics being the number one cause and then, you know, explaining what happens in type one diabetes, which is that your pancreas stops producing enough insulin. But there's always this really big question mark as to why this happens. No one seems to, right? Like the doctors don't know. I remember when Jordan was diagnosed, we were in the hospital and I kept wanting to know the same thing. I kept asking the same question, which was like, why did this happen? Like, how did this happen? Like what I, I wanted, I was really coming at it from a place of like, I want to know what went wrong in his body. Like, it, it, like essentially what pissed off his immune system so much, right? To be in this state of, of like huge inflammation and like what, how did this happen? Like he was only eight. So what I had known going into this, because I was, you know, just finishing my studies at that point, And I felt like I had really cleaned up our lifestyle, our diets, we were eating what I thought was extremely healthy. Um, you know, I was giving him all the supplements and all the things that I thought that were, you know, within my power, like, the, I thought I was really doing everything that I could to essentially give my kids the best start right in terms of their immune systems and just their health in general so this really took me by surprise and when I would ask the doctors they were like don't concern yourself with why we don't know why so that was really hard for me to swallow yeah for sure as a mom right like you like I'm not a mom but from what I've like witnessed with mothers is that like you want to do everything to mm -hmm. to try to give them the best quality of life that you that you couldn't I'm I'm assuming that's what led you to learning everything that you've currently learned and and are do and like I we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to that <laughs> part so the next part I wanted to ask you about is yeah so what were the first steps that you took so like you just didn't accept right like that that was it is what it is and you're like I'm guessing you're like no I need to learn more yeah so well actually if I'm being honest um when all of this happened I really felt bombarded, right? Because they start throwing all kinds of information at you. And I was still in that sort of phase of like needing to know why I didn't have the answers. I felt guilty. I felt like I should have seen this coming. 
Um, and so to be quite honest, like for the first couple of weeks, I think I walk, I was walking, not I think, I know, I was walking around in a fog. I was just, you know, hearing everything that the doctors were telling me. It wasn't resonating with my training, my passion, what I, you know, my values on, on holistic health, right? Because of course, like everything they were telling us had zero to do with holistic health. I mean, they told us that he, you know, he can eat however he wants. You're just going to learn to dose his insulin accordingly. Uh, we were taught that anytime he were to go into a low where you want to, you know, it's like imperative. It becomes, it's like a dangerous situation where you need to get his, his sugar levels back up to a, a quote unquote normal range to use things like rockets. You know, those Halloween candies, you know, those like, you know, those colorful, like old yeah, school yeah. candies. Yeah. So that was the number one uh, tool that we were given was like, keep rockets with you everywhere. And this was the nutritionist at the hospital who was telling us this. Yeah. I'll let that sink in for a second. <laughs> that seems so like, horror. like how, like, it just like hurts me inside that there's other people out there that are hearing that and that's not like a like a ding 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 like I know I, I had the benefit like the blessing of my mom being a dental hygienist so like I wasn't allowed sugar you know <laughs> like growing up I wasn't so if I heard something like that I would have been like what like what like but yeah, uh, what like I was never even allowed those things to begin with you know so that's just insane I can't believe that I can't believe that yeah. not even honey why not honey <laughs> well, this, this, yeah, I mean, and so <laughs> this is some of the questions I had when I really was able to come through the fog that I was initially in of just, you know, like, part of me became very sort of vulnerable to the information and feeling like, oh, my God, like, my kid is sick. Um, you know, tell me what to do, like, tell me what I need to do. But everything that they were telling me to do, I mean, aside from the insulin, which is a given, right, when you have type one diabetes, there's no way around that. And that was like, I had accepted that. But um even though every time I watched, you know, every time we injected him, I like I had this feeling came over me of what we were putting into his body. Right. But I, I came to understand and I accepted, I mean, I already understood, but I accepted at that. Um, but everything that they were telling us aside from that just wasn't resonating with what I, I felt to be um, just everything that I had known about health and wellness just didn't seem to make any sense to me. And I mean, hearing that essentially, you know, that he'll always just need to manage this, that there's no way through type one diabetes um, where the person, the child can thrive. Like it really is about, you know, learning to live with it. Um, that, that didn't resonate with me at all either. And so it was really when I came out of that fog <laughs> about three weeks in, I think, where I was like, okay, no, wait a minute. Like there is a way to give him his insulin and do the things that, you know, we're, we're told by science need to be done. Um, but then there's also what I've come to learn and understand and believe wholeheartedly about, you know, the best ways of obtaining holistic health and wellness. And, and, you know, they can, they can come together. And so I really, that's when I really set out to learn anything and everything that I possibly could on both ends of type one, right? So what, you know, doctors will tell you on the medicine side of things, but also natural medicine. <clears throat> and I just set out and I spoke to so many uh, professionals and specialists in the field. Um, I, I read, I don't even know how many books I went through. <laughs> like I was just, I'm a researcher by nature anyways. And, and here was no different, of course, because it was from my son. So I really dove, dove into it. And, it caused me to dive deep and really take another look at, you know, our diet, our lifestyle, and, you know, and start, like, inc incorporating some changes. Yay, it makes me so happy. <laughs> I love that. I'm a researcher by nature. I definitely feel that way, too. And everybody, we should all be like that. Like, we should always question everything. That doesn't mean that we don't have trust. It just means that we are, like, that we're exercising our, our muscle, right? Like that, that we are open to the idea that there are multiple options, multiple like sources of information, right? And I think it's so healthy to research in that way with everything in life, right? Um, yes. Yeah. A thinker, right? That's, that's a gift that we have that we can think critically. Um, so then I wanted to ask, what were the changes you started to make in his lifestyle? Like what were, yeah, how did you, what did you do and how did you do it? Okay, so we were already, so I think it's important to mention with, with Jordan that he was anxious. I think from the time he was born, I often say that I believe he was like born anxious. And he was always like as a baby, he would never sit still. 
Um, he, <clears throat> he always seemed like uh, he had a really hard time separating from me from a really young age. And we just started to see a lot of really um, clues that you know, anxiety was, was really a struggle for him. And so we had already been working through some of those struggles, right? We'd been dealing with the anxiety, um, which I you know, come, ha have come to realize how interconnected it was with his diabetes. At the time, I didn't know that. So we had already put some tools into place. You know, he, I had taught him some meditation techniques. Um, he really loved some, uh, you know, the nature sounds that he would listen to it would really help to calm him. So, you know, we added some of that because with the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, uh, not just the diagnosis itself caused some more anxiety, obviously, um, but also we found that when his sugars were elevated, his anxiety would also be elevated at the same time. And so one always tended to trigger the other. And so some of the things that were working for his anxiety or were help managing it were also helping for <clears throat> just to kind of keep them leveled, you know, as balanced as we possibly could. So we kept doing those things. But in addition to that, um, we, I started to implement uh, celery juicing. So we were, he was celery juicing every morning. He would have a small glass of organic celery that I would freshly uh, put through my juicer and he would drink that every single morning uh, because mainly because I read that in long-term studies right that it, it strengthens the pancreas so that was the um, that was the goal there and so we had implemented some celery juice which again we weren't seeing any short-term benefits but I mean I knew you know that I knew that celery has all of these amazing health benefits. I'm like, it can hurt. So we were doing that. Um, I had, you know, increased some of his vitamins and made sure that or what I thought at the time was, you know, the best of what I could find vitamin wise. It was always a little bit of an issue for me. As a holistic practitioner, I could never really find a brand that I was able to fully get behind because there's always like some questions to the ingredients or the effectiveness. So I, again, had done a lot of research there and, you know, I thought I was using the best that I could find, the best that was out there. It wasn't super effective, but better than nothing, I thought. So those were some of the ways that we started uh, to put nothing. These things were helping to manage. I'd also started using a liquid magnesium on the soles of his feet at that time to help with his sleep and help regulate and get more magnesium into him. Um, again, some results, but nothing that was like, okay, you know, we're seeing the light here and things are getting easier. We were still very much in a manage uh, stage and his glucose levels were all over the place. Mm -hmm. So. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like typically, right, like we, we, learn that magnesium topically is usually the best way to yeah. learn it, but it's also the type so I resonate also with what you said about like working with um and trying to find the best supplements and and company things like that because that was that was me too working with my clients I was always looking for the best I couldn't get behind one yeah because it was it was also my experience of working at uh, an organic health food store with all the supplement mm -hmm. companies. And I would always find something like wrong with even the best ones. And it would like, it would drive me crazy. I'm just like, but like, why did they add this one thing? That's one make thing. The absorption of everything, right? Like magnesium stearate yeah. is like so many things, but it can impede your absorption. So why am I telling people to buy something they may not absorb? Right. And, exactly. and what I learned about the magnesium also is just most companies, like even the top brands have shortened their, their process in creating the minerals. So they're not as easily absorbed anymore by the body. They used to, because I know, and it's just normal. Like, it, like for instance, this, the, the number one like brand, which is, I won't say the name, but like a number one brand, <laughs> they one number one brand. They, yeah. I learned why it's because they actually sold their company. So it used to be like a family owned, they sold it and then they, they yes. shortened the process. So that's why it's so important to like Sherry saying like you have to do research and research a lot. So yeah, so you were seeing these things were making some improvement, but not enough for you or like mom and energy to be like, okay. <laughs> no, well that's it because well that's it because I I knew like for instance, take magnesium, right? I knew the benefits of magnesium and so the more I was reading about it, I was like, Yeah, this makes total sense that he would need more of this and that he's probably depleted in it to begin with. But then knowing what I knew about it and knowing what it should have done when I started to give it to him, I wasn't seeing those thing, things add up, right? I wasn't seeing the results. And so I was like, 
and we were doing it very consistently and and so i was doing everything that i knew to do in order to get those results and they just weren't there and jordan is it's important to mention he's a huge athlete you know and it's so interesting more on a i'm big on the spiritual side of things too right i mean in holistic medicine right we look at it all um and i always found it so interesting how you know he was born anxious and he was born with this kind of struggle um uh, but he was also born a natural athlete and it's so interesting it's like a natural remedy right to to counterbalance the anxiety so for him being on the ice as a hockey player was the best place for him to be because there was no anxiety while on the ice there was, he was like free you know i really felt it watching him from the stands he was free and yet, and one of the hardest things about the diagnosis of diabetes was that it was really starting to interfere with that one thing that for him brought so much freedom to his life, right? He, his endurance had gone way, way down. Um, he wasn't performing the way he would. And therefore, he was like not so keen on going anymore. Like he, he was losing interest in something that had given him so much, so much passion, you know, and so much love. So that, that that was another sort of a gear that really set me more determined than ever to to get to a place where like no like my kid's gonna thrive you know like we're gonna we're gonna figure this out and um it was really it was purium it was it was finding purium and you know it didn't take me long it was a very quick conversation um before i was like yeah, this is what we need like this this I have a really good feeling about this. It all made perfect sense to me. I was like, where has this been all my life? Um, and I ordered and I uh, started uh, Jordan on uh, Power Shake. So we do, in the mornings, we do a mix of Power Shake with barley juice powder and green spectrum. So he has a glass of that. So does his brother. But So they both have it uh, while I make breakfast. And then during breakfast, he has his Epigenius Shake every morning. And uh, in the evening, we have a pop of cherry. And so those were the products that I introduced into his into his routine. It's been three months. And I'll tell you, Becky, I think it was five weeks in where he looked at me one day and he's like, Mom, I'm feeling really good. I, yeah, I say it and I get emotional because because it's not something that he would just say otherwise, you know, and I, and I, I felt it when he said it. He's like, I'm feeling really good. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, tell me more. Like, how are you feeling good? I mean, because I was already seeing that his uh, glucose levels were becoming beautifully balanced. You know, and I hadn't wanted to say it out loud just yet because I was like, we've tried so many different ways and so many different things to get there. And, you know, here they are just like, I, like almost like magic, you know, on the page, just all of his recordings were beautiful. And, and he said, he said, I feel, I don't feel tired anymore. I feel energized all the time. And he's like, I feel like, and when I was on the ice last night, you know, at hockey practice, he's like, I could have done another 10 laps on the ice. Like I, I, I feel like I'm on unstoppable. And that to me was, I just, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. It just doesn't get better than that. I literally started tearing as you said that. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, so happy for him. And then imagining what it must have felt like for you as a mom to hear that. Like, that must have been, like, such, like, a, like your heart must have just, like, uh, like, filled your whole body with love and happiness hearing that from your baby. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard to explain how I was feeling because, you know, we had implemented so many things that I, that I knew theoretically sh should make a difference. But, you know, we were missing one very big key piece, which was his gut health, his gut health. Nobody had ever told me to look at his gut health. I never learned, like I said, you know, at the beginning of, of our chat here, like I, I, I was never taught that there was a connection between gut health and type 1 diabetes ever. Um, and when I finally started learning about that and, and I was introduced to that idea, right, um, it was like, it was a game changer in how I not just uh, what, you know, went about uh, treating or like coming up with a holistic pro protocol for my son Jordan but just in in the way I look at you know our health as a family uh, my client's health it's been a complete game changer because um focusing on repairing is that that was the missing piece because that needed to be repaired before all of these other great nourishing things that we were doing could actually take effect it's so it's so like inspiring and so like Oh, it's it. That's what brought me into Purium. Also, was just was Biomedic when Biomedic's in the Epigenius that Cherry was talking about. So Biomedic, like 
when I first first heard about Purium, like my total honesty was that I was like, you don't know better than me. <laughs> I was like, because I had been using, like I had reversed a lot of, of um, like ailments that I had using superfoods. So like, I felt like I was like, just the, I knew everything about superfoods and I was like, I know what to do. And I heard of it and I'm like, no, this is better. This is better. And then I, I learned about biomedic and biomedic is the only thing that w that's proven right now mm -hmm. and we have like a 30 page study to, to to pair with this that's proven to remove the majority of glyphosate which is deteriorating our gut um in only six weeks so that like when people say like how does it transform your health so much how much it's just because glyphosate is neg is so negatively impacting our overall health and we're we face it every single day no matter what like even if you eat all organic definitely it doesn't mean don't eat organic you know still go for the organic as much as you possibly can but you're still getting faced with it so your gut is constantly being compromised and your gut lining which is when you lay it out is like the surface of a tennis court is also only one cell wall thick so this is just always like being permeated by like toxins so glyphosate how this helps so deeply at the level of gut health and is able was able to help share with her son is just because of the fact that it's improving the permeability meaning uh, the strength of the gut lining and it's removing that glyphosate so that's why it's so powerful and that's why it's, it's actually for everyone because yes. everyone has like everyone <laughs> everyone and that's everyone. What I mean right away i'm like i have to share this with people and my my experience with it was that i was able to help a client who had type, he had type 2 diabetes but he had been on medication for 20 years and after doing the ultimate lifestyle transformation just 30 day protocol he went back back to his doctor and his doctor like so begrudgingly told him that he didn't need his diabetes medication anymore it's amazing right amazing absolutely amazing it is I it's it's also just, but that's type two you guys like that's something yeah. we can that is lifestyle based and not something that you're born with so this is um different this is different from what sherry's talking about but this is such a like because all that matters really is qual is quality of life right like that's what you're most focused on that's exactly it it wasn't like i knew that you know i listen i love to dream and so it bothers me to say you know i have a hard time saying out loud no like whoa you know, type one diabetes will never be cured because I like to dream and I like to believe that anything is possible. But from what we know right now and where we are right now, no, you know, he, he's, he is always going to have to live with type one diabetes. He is always going to have to give him insulin, but, but, and it's a huge, but, you know, we get to decide how much insulin he has to live on. We get to decide what quality of life he gets to have right that's well within like our control as as you know as, as his parents but will be and and is now and i'm i'm teaching him that it's well within his own control right because that's ultimately what i wanted to understand is that this diagnosis doesn't um define his life in any way whatsoever and and it is about creating health despite the diabetes you know creating health i don't even like the word despite it's like create creating health anyway you know because that should be the goal is to create optimal health and i truly believe that optimal health is available for us all it's on offer for all of us we just you know we got to know those tools and we got it it's got to start with the gut like i agree with you a thousand percent becky like everybody needs to start with biomedic because we all have gut repair that needs to be done i mean in the in the, in the world that we live in today and i mean most of our gut damage goes back years and years probably to childhood or or you know to babies or even before i mean i believe that a lot of jordan's gut damage came from me because my gut was not optimal to say the least right i mean i was we could talk about all of my stuff too that i had and autoimmune conditions and as a child i was always on antibiotics and all of those things right so i didn't have anywhere near optimal gut health and so i know that i created while well, he was in my stomach like i created his first gut microbiome right and so it goes that far back it truly does and so we all could stand from some serious gut repair and i think that we would all see huge huge improvements in anything and everything that's ailing us it's, it's a 
it's empowering everyone it should be empowering and, and to not like blame yourself like if you're a mom to not like blame yourself like you do as absolute best you can and like this information isn't like you're you're not getting like a newsletter or you know it's not talked about like on tv like there, there's no um constant reminder like there's constant reminders to buy mcdonald's but yeah. there's not constant reminders to check right? on your health and how and to see how much how negatively antibiotics impact you like I was like you where I was on antibiotics like six to seven times a year I was just yeah. doing I before where I was saying like doctors would be so shocked you're like oh well this one doesn't work for you anymore because you abuse it too much oh this one doesn't work for and then I'm just like so stop <laughs> describing me them like what else can I do and then they said well you can take out your tonsils and your adenoids and I'm like <laughs> me yeah <laughs> like, you said that too? yeah yeah, oh my God. yeah. and I, I, I uh, what's really amazing is that when I addressed my gut health and when I, um, I also started to look at food in terms of micronutrients, so looking more for cellular nutrition, when I started doing that, everything went away. Like I haven't had an infection like that in seven plus years. And when the doctors call me back to reschedule, because at first I canceled my first, uh, what's it called, tonsillectomy, like I canceled it because I was afraid. And then they call me back and I'm like, no, I don't get them anymore. I'm fine. And they're like, what? They're like, no, 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 it's not possible. I'm like, no, no, I don't get them. And they're like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you want me to come in and tell you guys what I've been eating? And they're just like, no. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's so, um, it, this is like an exciting thing. So yes, take action uh, for yourself and for the future generations, but also know that no matter where you're at in terms of your health and vitality, that you can improve. It's just about Number one, not being hard on yourself, thinking you have to fix everything all at once. It doesn't have to be that way. Like small steps over time make really big, big changes. And knowing what is the quality. Because how I saw it was that if you're already investing in your health, why not choose the option that is the highest quality and also like, so you don't have to take something else to remove something that might be in there. Like it's not just like biomedic like that. Um, Shari was talking about like she's talking about like the green spectrum and all of these things have been tested for all of like the harmful like toxins that you're actually trying to remove from your body whereas when I would work in that holistic like that um, uh, organic health food store and I would go with, to the trainings of these top companies I would ask them like do you test for glyphosate test for radiation do you test for heavy metals and they all said no so then I'm like so I'm not going to recommend you to anyone because mm -hmm. then I'm not doing the best job that I can do to help people exactly Right, so Ethereum lets us do it. Allows us to like, when people will ask me, also they'll be like, "Oh, it's it's an MLM and it's just this." And I'm like, "I don't care what it is. It's the best of the best, and that's all that matters." <laughs> that's it. I mean, it's it's been the missing piece of my holistic toolbar uh, toolbox, uh, professionally and personally. And I mean, it's it's the single most important thing that we do for our health now. You know, I've I've, I've worked so hard to create uh, as as toxic green environment as I can in our home you know but once we walk out once we step out our front door so much of it is out of our control and so I love knowing that we have we are exactly that we are like flooding ourselves with nutrients um and I love that like it resonated so much the first time I heard like on a cellular level it's like that's what I've been missing. That's what we've all been missing, right? Um, it's that really, it's that nourishment on a cellular level. And that is like, my goodness, that is like the top of the top quality. It doesn't get any better than that. I love that. And also, mm -hmm. right, like when you say cellular level, the next thing I think about, I think of DNA expression and, you know, and then it leads me to thinking of all the people that say, oh, it just runs in my family. It's just this, it's just that. Yeah. No, like we're like 5% genetic and the rest is environment and, and still like, Epigenetics shows us that we can change the expression of our genes. So you always have the ability to shift that. And then I always reference people, I'm like, go check out Dr. Joe Dispenza and see, yes. it's like, right? Yes. How much? Love him. He Love his work. Fine, right? He filled his spine with his mind. Like, okay. yes, and he ate healthily. That's, that's a part of it too. But like, everything, anything is possible if you mm -hmm. don't see limitations. And I think that's like what you, that's like a perfect example of, of this story, your story with your son is that you just mm -hmm. didn't allow there to be limitations and made me so happy. Thank you. Thank you for being <laughs> you and like doing that so that we can share this story with other people so that they can not feel that block. And I feel like you just like bended reality for everybody that gets to watch this. Wow.
Thank you so much. That means a really that means a lot to me because I, I think that's that's really what it was. It was about um, when I was see, seeing those barriers at first. It was very disempowering. It was very disempowering. And once I was able to step through them, um, yeah, then then the limits were endless, right? And and we do get to create, and we do have so much power in our health. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about about this and about my son and his journey. And yeah. I love it. I love these conversations so much. <laughs> Me too. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Sherry, for sharing. And um, anybody that's watching this, please share it with anyone that you know that is uh, living with uh, type 1 diabetes or just anyone that wants to learn more about the potential of shifting their health through nutrition, through cellular nutrition and addressing gut health. And Sherry and I are both here to help you and guide you in any way that we can. Um, so yeah thank you so much sherry was there anything else that you would want to say before we jump off no i mean i think, think i think we we covered most important and so no this was awesome thank you so much okay thank you so much and everyone have a good day till next time bye everyone bye.